Hi, I'm Coach Chuck uh, on behalf of the National Free Flight Society or NIFIS Youth Development Program and we're starting a series of uh, helpful videos on various parts of building and flying indoor rubber-powered planes. Uh, myself and Coach Brian have helped on the uh, Science Olympiad forums as well as on Hip Pocket for a number of years and we've identified some areas that uh, uh, are consistent shortcomings in uh, student understanding on building these planes. This first video uh, we're going to focus on building a balsa wood prop and the reason this comes to the forefront is we are considering a uh, postal contest uh, focused on the scrap center plane. This is a small uh, indoor airplane suitable for flying in your living room. Uh, this particular one weighs a half a gram. We're going to have two classes, a half gram and one gram. Uh, building that light, the propeller needs to be extremely light and the plastic options that are on uh, available commercially are, are going to weigh more than the entire plane. So the intent today is to build uh, a prop like this. As you can see, we've got uh, balsa wood blades that have to be formed to shape. We have a balsa wood spar and then we have the uh, prop shaft. All of that needs to be shaped and put together. Here's a, another example prop. This is for a limited penny plane. It's a 12 inch uh, span on this prop. But the same construction. We have blades uh, formed from balsa with an airfoil and it's a helical pitch meaning that uh, as you get out to the tip the pitch gets flatter. This has a basswood spar instead of balsa for more strength and a slightly larger diameter prop shaft. Uh, let's start off looking at some of the materials that are needed. First of all, you need the wood for the uh, blades. Uh, the blades on the scraps are about uh, 15 thousandths of an inch thick. You can purchase indoor wood uh, from indoor free flight supply. Um, but scraps is intended to use wood you have around the house. Uh, so we can start with uh, 30 second inch hobby store balsa. This is uh, lightweight, uh, under six pounds per cubic foot. Uh, I think this piece is about 5.75 and uh, it should be sea grain, which uh, gives it a lot of stiffness across the, the piece of wood. You can recognize the sea grain by the mottled look of the grain on the surface here. This is a 32nd of an inch thick, so it's uh, a little more than twice as thick as we need. And we'll demonstrate methods to thin that out. We need the spar. Uh, this is a 16th inch square uh, piece of wood, uh, six to eight pound wood. So it's still contest grade, but it's on the heavier end of contest grade. I sliced this out of a, a sheet of uh, seven and a half pound wood. Uh, so we need that. And we need the uh, prop shaft. The uh, prop shaft in this case, I'm using uh, uh, 0.012 diameter uh, steel um, and this is what we call a reverse S hook. That's my favorite uh, prop shaft because the uh, rubber will ride in the middle of the S there and uh, won't tend to wrap around the, the prop shaft. You can use a standard hook as well. The uh, steel wire is available as guitar strings uh, for small quantities and you'll have to straighten it as best you can. Cut off a piece uh, an inch or two long, uh, roll it on a piece of glass and just work it with pliers or with your fingers until you get uh, a piece that's maybe an inch and a half long that's uh, relatively straight. The RPM is not real high on the scraps so it's, it's not uh, uh, absolutely critical to have this straight but uh, get it as straight as you can. You can also buy uh, prepared uh, 
uh, prop shaft from uh, several sources. And for the scraps, if you're building in the one gram class, you can use 15 thousandths, which is available as uh, KNS wire from your local hobby shop or possibly even Hobby Lobby. Uh, but if you're trying to go for one gram, I mean for half a gram, you need to get the 012 to 013 and guitar strings are your, your best local source for that. Uh, finally, you're going to need uh, some Teflon uh, thrust bearings. And it's a little hard to see because they're white, but there's a whole bunch of them in this bag. And they're simply cut from a piece of uh, Teflon wire insulation. And to cut these, uh, we take the wire insulation and we put it on a, a scrap of our, our steel wire. And we put that, here's, here's the wire insulation, we put that in a chuck of a drill and use a razor blade, uh, just touching it every uh, half millimeter or so, and that'll slice off some nice thin pieces. You can also buy uh, Teflon uh, thrust washers uh, from Indoor Free Flight. Uh, as well as other sources. Uh, but you, you need something between the uh, prop hub and the prop hanger uh, to reduce friction, and, and these uh, Teflon uh, beads work the best. Um, as far as tools, you're going to need um, a thin CA, and you're going to want a capillary applicator. This is simply a scrap piece of balsa wood with uh, two pins. Let's see if I can get it in the image there. Uh, two pins uh, diagonally into it and almost to where their tips touch, maybe a half millimeter or less between their tips right out here. And that allows you to pick up uh, a fraction of a drop of CA. You never want to pour the CA in uh, directly from the bottle. Um, we need a sanding block, and this is just a scrap of 1x2 with some fine, uh, say, 220 grit sandpaper glued to the block. And I've got a second one here. You can't have too many of these. Uh, and I've got blue tape on them to sand to certain thicknesses. And we'll, we'll take a look at how that's used in just a bit. Um, we need a smooth surface. I use uh, glass from uh, the, the back window of a pickup uh, when we change out the glass for a sliding window. But any sheet of glass uh, uh, an eighth to a quarter inch thick uh, works well. Um, we need a prop form. We need to shape the blades. And this is my preferred plot, uh, prop block. This is uh, printed uh, from a um, 3D printer. And it is uh, a 10 inch pitch. So we have a five inch diameter prop. I'm going with a two to one pitch to uh, diameter ratio. And this also has the camber of the prop built into it. This is available on uh, GitHub. Uh, just do a search for prop form or I'll, I'll put the link in the uh, discussion. Um, this works well. You also want a scrap of, uh, this is 32nd inch wood uh, that you can form to the shape of the prop block and use this, I label it cover, and it literally covers the blades. The reason you want that is the blades are so thin when you try and wrap it with string, uh, you're going to damage the blade. So we let the cover take the damage and sandwich the blades between the prop block and the cover. Um, if you don't want to print the prop block, another option is to use what we call a bucket prop. If you go to Hip Pocket Aeronautics and their uh, plan section, look for Fred Rash's bucket prop spreadsheet, and that'll tell you exactly how to do a bucket prop. But if you take your, your uh, prop blade, this is the cover, but it's like the blade, and put it on a cylindrical or conical surface at an angle, so the tip of the blade is toward the top of the cup here, and we're angled maybe 30 degrees, it gives a good approximation of a helical pitch. You want to use a spreadsheet to get the right angle to tilt this, and that does a very good job if you don't have the means to uh, make a 3D printed prop block. One more option is to make your own prop block with uh, balsa wood. And this is pretty simple. 
uh, we have a, a balsa wood base, and then we have uh, three different heights of balsa wood strip here. And I think the first one's a half inch, uh, second one's an inch, and the third one is an inch and a half. Those all come together at a point, and I, I plot out on paper on the surface here uh, some circles with some radial lines. And you can calculate uh, what angle you want between those pieces of wood to get your correct helical pitch. So if the, let's say the wood was uh, 30 degrees uh, apart, then that's uh, one twelfth of your uh, full circle, 360 degrees. And so if you want a 10 inch pitch, your uh, change in height between your two pieces of wood would be uh, one twelfth of your 10 degrees pitch that you, I mean 10, uh, 10 inches of pitch you want, or, or somewhere around 7 eighths of an inch difference. The reason I have three strips here is because uh, you, you, you get pretty close together in the middle here, and, and so having that third strip allows you to build up your, your prop surface uh, higher uh, at the middle and then taper down to just two two uh, supports at the outer end. Once you get those uh, two or three uh, supporting uh, pieces of scrap wood glued vertically, and I've got, I've got a piece here to hold it vertically, then you can start taking strips of wood. These are about an eighth inch square and just start laying them on there and gluing them with CA. I use thick CA for this get your, your shape and then uh, sand it smooth. It's going to have a little bit of a step shape. So just sand it. Uh, I put some varnish or some uh, epoxy on the surface here just to harden it up a bit. And then I drew a, a line right along the lowest of my supporting uh, pieces of wood here. And that line is my um, spar line. On this built up um, prop form, uh, your, your core to your prop at any location is a straight line because we built it out of straight segments of eighth inch square uh, balsa. Um, so this doesn't build a camber into your prop, but you can take a, a piece of balsa about an eighth inch thick in this case, this is for the LPP, actually this is for a Science Olympiad one of the years, um, and you simply round that out, make an airfoil shape on the top of that and then go ahead and put it on the prop lock, uh, form it to shape like we'll do with the prop blades in just a minute. And then you can tape that down to the prop block and that gives you your camber or your airfoil to your uh, uh, prop blade. So you, you'll wanna do that if you have a method that's making a, a flat surface for the, the prop. One thing you'll notice on uh, both these props, the LPP as well as the um, scraps prop is most of the blade area or all of the blade area in this case is ahead of the spar. The spar is right at the trailing edge of the blade and that's done on purpose. That makes this a flaring prop. As the prop tries to turn harder the uh, aerodynamic loading on it makes it go to a higher pitch. If you build the prop symmetric along the uh, spar then that won't happen and that's fine for high ceilings. But for low ceilings, you want some flare to try and absorb a little more energy or a little more of the torque when your rubber is just starting out. And then later in the flight, it will relax down to the design pitch and be a better match to the rubber throughout the flight. So I'm a fan of these flaring props, but you can also make a fully symmetric prop. You also want a pitch gauge, and we're gonna use the pitch gauge for assembling the prop together. This particular uh, pitch gauge is one that uh, I made some uh, design and posted it on uh, Thingiverse. Uh, so it's available for download, again, if you have a 3D printer. And you're gonna need a little bit of hardware. You're gonna need a knob here to tighten it. And uh, you can set any angle you want on it and snug it down. It's got holes to set up the uh, prop shaft support at one inch, two inch, four inch, and six inches from the protractor. 
for the scraps we'll use the two inch position. You want to be toward the outer end of the prop because that's the part of the prop that's doing the work. Um, and typically you're going to be somewhere, depending how close to the outer end of the prop you are, you're going to be somewhere around 40 to 45 degrees on the pitch gauge. Um, so I like that one. I designed it and made it available. Uh, another option is uh, something like this. This is modeled after one uh, that's available from uh, Freedom Flight Models. I think J&H has something similar. But this is just a protractor I downloaded online and uh, it's mounted to a piece of plywood, a 16th inch plywood. Um, another piece of 16th inch ply supports it. A piece of scrap uh, wood going back and then we have a, a small stand here for mounting the uh, prop shaft and the prop shaft goes into this groove and holds the prop like that and then we put a, a clothes pin on to hold it into that uh, groove then you can rotate this to measure it or you can uh, place a, um, a clothes pin on it to lock it in to where you're trying to set it up so this works well, or the uh, printed one works well. Okay, so our first step is going to uh, be to get the blades out of this piece of wood. And in order to do that, first we need to sand it to thickness. Best to sand it as a full stick, a lot easier that way. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our uh, sanding block, and we're going to take uh, original scotch blue masking tape. This is painter's tape. They have several types available now. I know the original is about five thousandths of an inch per layer. So uh, it's also the cheapest. The newer ones, they do different things with the stickiness. And so I have three layers uh, here and here on my sanding block. And the three layers makes it 15 thousandths. You can see it marked 015. Over here I have 025, so I have five layers. But today we're going to use the 15 thousandths, so three layers, and enough space between them to, to fit your balsa. Uh, you're going to then sand the balsa against a piece of glass in order to uh, get it down to this thickness. And the tape will act as a stop, so it'll stop sanding once you get down to the first thing we'll discover when we try sanding down to as thin as 15 thousandths is the balsa gets very fragile. So uh, we're going to do it in a particular order here in order not to crush the piece of balsa. Again, we have our 15 thousandths section there. I've also got the 25 thousandths here. I don't want to sand the 25 thousandths, so I'm going to make sure that part is off the table or off the piece of glass. And I've just got my two sections of 15, 15 thousandths on the table. Now rather than sanding the entire piece now, I will just sand the very end of it. I'm going to take short strokes. If you go off the end, you're going to crush it. So you want to sand uh, maybe in circles here, but sand until it stops sanding and you want maybe three quarters of an inch wide sanded at the end of the piece of wood. What this will do is allow you to tape down the end of the piece of wood and that will make it uh, a lot less susceptible to crushing once you get a couple inches sanded. Um, you're probably going to break a lot of balsa starting out doing this. Okay, there it stops sanding. You can feel it um, not dragging as much once you get to that point. And that end is now about 15 thousandths thick. This um, thickness measurement tool is available at Amazon. It's not necessary, but it, it sure comes in handy. It's maybe $20 or so. And I've removed the spring. You can open up the back, take the four screws off, and you'll see the spring you can just unhook. And now just gravity will hold the plunger down. And that way it don't crush the wood. You can see it's about 12 and a half, 13 thousandths at the end. Maybe 14 there. So it's about where we want it. You can trust the tape to get you to the right thickness. I like having the thickness gauge, but it's, uh, it's an advanced tool that you don't necessarily need to get started. 
All right, now we're going to be sanding the rest of the wood there. And so we want to hold down this end and taper in with tape so that if we go off the end with this, we're not going to snag that end. So now we've got it held down securely at one end. We're going to hold the other end with our hand and we're going to go ahead and sand another couple of inches. If you get your prop shape here, blade shape, you can lay out and see two, two uh, blades are going to take us out to about here. So that's, that's as far as we need to sand for now, as long as we don't break anything. Trust me, you'll break some wood. Okay, I've finished sanding it, and the last stroke I took, I caught this end of it. I went ahead and sanded the whole thing, and you can see I buckled up the whole piece of wood. This is what we were trying to avoid, but it happens. Now, if we lay this on, we can see if we can get, we can get a full blade there, and we can get a full blade there. So, it's not the end of the world, it's a waste of some balsa. 15 there, 20 or so there, but we're 15 here. We're, we're closer to 20 in here, so I'm going to sand just a little bit more. And I'm, since I don't have the end tape down, I'm taking very short strokes. Let the sandpaper do the work. Oh. I'm using the 25 thousandths end, that's why it's not finishing. Alright, check it out, 16, 17, 16, pretty close. Okay, next we want to mark our prop blades, and especially for the flaring props, I like the grain to go lengthwise along the blade. So we'll lay the blade on there. This is a gel pen, you can also use a fine line Sharpie. Uh, you want something that you can just lightly drag on the wood and it won't cut into the wood. Uh, my preference is a fine line Sharpie, but I didn't see one in the toolbox right now, so I grabbed this. I'm also, I've got marks on my um, layout template there for the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, spar line. So I'm going ahead and marking that. And here's my broken piece. We'll go ahead and find the best location to get a blade out of this. going to be easiest to uh, mark those spar lines while it's still a whole piece of wood. Go ahead and do that. And now we need to cut out the blades. For something this thin, I just use a pair of scissors. Um, the important thing when using scissors is don't try and cut sharp corners uh, with, with the whole sheet there. So what I'm going to do is come in and cut straight cuts until I'm close to the shape that I want. Where there's straight lines it's not a problem to go in and, and cut the shape. Then as I'm following the curve 
the small scrap to the outside breaks up instead of your blade breaking up. There's nothing magical about this blade shape. Um, we do have it mostly flaring. The spar is inboard just a little bit. We have a slightly uh, wider blade in toward the root and as you get to the tip it gets a little bit narrow. That, that's common. Uh, it, it seems to work well for us. And for scraps we really didn't uh, explore many other options. Again, taking straight cuts where I can, leaving just a little bit that can be trimmed off, and then follow the curve around with just that little bit. Once you have your two blades, you can put them together and it's more important that they be identical than that they fit a certain shape. So I'll put them together, hold them together and just lightly sand around the perimeter, just taking off the, the corners that the, sugar, that the scissors made, just give a nice pleasing outline to it. If I were working with thicker blades, say uh, the LPP we're, we're using 25 thousandths, I might come in here and try and round the edges, give it a little bit of an airflow, but on the scraps it really doesn't matter. Okay, now I've got my two blades. Uh, next step will be to uh, form those blades. Okay, we're ready to form the blades. I've uh, taken them over to the sink and I've uh, soaked them with a little bit of water. Uh, best to leave that sit for five minutes, but uh, th this isn't a really radical blade uh, curvature. So a couple minutes soaking in the water, that's all you need. Now I'm putting a little piece of tissue. And this is Jap tissue. It's just what I had laying around. You can use gift tissue, just about anything. Um, and I'm putting a little layer of it between the two blades. All this does is it makes it a whole lot easier to separate the blades when you're done. Uh, they tend to stick together and they're so thin you can really uh, split things as you're taking it apart. Now on this prop block, my prop blocks always start at the zero radius here. And so you wouldn't want the blade all the way up there. You're going to have some prop uh, uh, spar in there around the hub area. Uh, the outer end is on this one two and a half inches. It's set for five diameter. So the outer edge is at two and a half and you want the outer edge of uh, your, your blade to go at the outer edge of the prop form. And then the groove in the plot, prop form is the spar line. That's, uh, uh, that's going to be a straight line. If you were to look uh, straight down, uh, you'd see it's a, a straight line. Um, so that's where your spar is going to attach. And you carefully make sure that that's lined up. The, the line you put on the blade is lined up with the uh, spar groove. Hold it down and carefully form your blade to the shape. Then uh, you're going to come back and set the cover on. Again, trying to get it lined up. And then you can wrap it with string. Um, you can, I like pet wrap, but pet wrap you can only use once and then it goes bad. So uh, we're going to use a rubber band here. The thing with the rubber band is it does absorb some microwaves. And I, I'm lazy. I cook this in the microwave. Uh, you could leave this dry overnight. That's probably preferable. But I'm usually building with the kids, and um, we need the prop block. So we're going to throw it in the microwave. You want to throw it in a fairly low power. I usually do three, maybe four on the um, uh, heat level, and maybe three or four minutes, maybe just two minutes, try it out on this and then put it in a little longer if it's not dry. You can see actually where the rubber band got hot on previous runs here. 
and actually melted my um, my uh, prop block a little bit. So you, you got to be careful. You don't want to overheat it, but the microwave is a quick way to do it. You can stick it in an oven at say uh, 120 to 150 uh, for a few hours. Uh, the microwave kind of steams the wood. It drives the, the moisture out quickly and I think it gives a, a, a good shape to it. But if you're using plastic for the blocks, you got to really be careful you don't overheat it. Okay, so we're going to sand the spar now. This is a, a cut down to five inches, so it's the, for the scraps. I like a spar going the full length of the blade, but it doesn't need as much strength out at the tips as it does at the root. So we're going to taper it, uh, double taper it on, on both ends, uh, both in thickness and width. We've marked the very middle so that we don't sand that at all. Okay, this is a replacement part of the original video. Uh, what we want to do on this spar is to taper it from the center where it's a 16th inch square out to the tip at about uh, 25 thousandths uh, thick in both the width and the height. And in fact, when we uh, join it to the blades, it's going to be easiest if this is actually rounded as well as tapered. So it'll be like a large toothpick. Um, in reviewing some online videos from Mike Curta, a, a free flight uh, expert, uh, he presented a method that works a lot better than my method, so uh, I've gone to using that. What we have here is a tool uh, that's very simply a couple pieces of, uh, this looks like 3 balsa with some uh, medium grit, say 220. 150 to 220 sandpaper glued to one surface and it's as long as the spar maybe a little longer in this case and on one of these I've glued two pieces of 16th inch square balsa could be basswood and at the other end I've glued a piece of uh, 25 thousandths thick as a stop then when I put these two together we end up with a tapered slot here 25 thousandths at one end 60 thousandths at the other end and we can simply take our spar and insert it in and I like to insert it in uh, on the diagonal so it's going to sand on the high points and then I very loosely hold the uh, two pieces together. I don't clamp them real tight, but we start coming in and out to knock off that corner. And then we can rotate it 90 degrees, come in and out a little more to uh, knock off that corner. And then most of your sanding happens on the in and out motion, but you want to keep turning it so that you get a nice round toothpick shape rather than developing uh, flats perhaps at a different angle. I'm not clamping it very tightly, uh, just clamping it loosely and rotating it as I'm, I'm coming in and out. And as it uh, sands, it's going to close up some. You're going to get rid. You don't want to sand it by rotating like this. You want to sand it by uh, coming in and out. And as it starts to get loose in there, you can go a little deeper in, and you want to get until this point. Uh, with that you've marked in the middle is just going in. So we just keep turning it, sanding it, turning it. Uh, you want to constantly be turning it, sanding it in and out. And it's still grabbing in a few spots. This is actually a harder piece of balsa than I'd normally use for the spar. I just grabbed a scrap to demonstrate this new tool. And it's still grabbing in a few spots. And as you get close to the end, you can hold a little tighter and it's still grabbing in a few spots. Once that center line is is uh, getting to the entry point of the tool 
and it's not grabbing as you rotate around, you'll be finished. Um, you want to make sure you keep rotating it, but don't rotate it to sand it or you will break it off, especially with the lighter wood we'd actually use for a scrap spar. So there we have a nice round toothpick-like um, spar. It's about 25 thousandths at this end and it's still about uh, 60 thousandths in the middle. We turn it over and do the same thing on the other end. Just be patient, don't push it too fast, and you'll have a nice uh, double toothpick uh, spar uh, that's easy to glue to the blade. So this works a lot better than the uh, method I originally had in the video. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a hole for the prop shaft. And I'm just putting this on top of some scrap wood. Hold it down with two fingers. And in this case, I'm just going to take the prop shaft and spin it in there. You can also take a little scrap of your um, prop shaft material and glue that into, say, an eighth inch square piece of balsa uh, to give you a handle. But with this small of a piece, I, I can just drill it in and if it was uh, bass wood, I would definitely want to uh, have a handle on it. But that gets the uh, prop shaft through. Let's see if I can get it focused there. Gets the prop shaft through. You want to make sure it comes in and out centered on the, the piece of wood. Okay, our next uh, step is to get the right length between the elbow on the prop shaft and the surface of the spar and for my that that's going to depend on your prop hanger uh, for my prop hanger I want uh, about 12 or 13 millimeters so I will press that let's see if I can get it press that in and measure it press it in a little more And that's at 13 there. Carefully hold it such that nothing moves. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, now with the prop shaft perpendicular to the piece of wood, I'm going to grab with a, a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm going to grab perpendicular to the prop shaft like this and perpendicular to the spar so like this so it's forming the third axis and I've got a good grip on it I don't want the pliers to move at all but I'll slide the piece of wood away and then I'll come in here and I'll push with my thumb to get a sharp 90 degrees right against the plier. You don't want to curve this part because that's your prop shaft. You want to get this angle in the wire right at 90 degrees. And that looks good there. Now you want to cut that off. And we'll, we'll cut it off to um, about two or three milli millimeters long. So let's see. We've got an angle on the end of it. There we go. And then we can shove that down until that angle is against the wood of the spar. We'll make sure it's pretty much 90 degrees coming out of the spar and then we're going to put a drop of CA on that. Let me get that prepared. So we've got the wire pretty close to perpendicular to the spar and we've got that elbow 
pushed up against the spar and now we take our drop of glue in our applicator and just touch it right in there and that's going to lock that in just one small small drop of glue ca can be very heavy it's surprising how quickly it builds up let me try and zoom in a little bit okay now you can see the the tang of the prop shaft is against the spar there and we're going to take some ordinary sewing thread and we can hold it with one hand against the spar let's see if we can get it in the field of view here working on it here we go and then we're going to put two wraps around and then we can let the spool of thread hang let me zoom out a little I'm having a hard time here so we have two wraps of thread around here and it's toward the tip of the tang you don't want it toward the root because you don't want to get it tangled in where the uh, prop shaft is going to go through the prop hanger again get a, a drop of CA with your applicator and just touch it to the thread uh, if necessary come around to the other side I'm using a beige thread but it looks kind of white there until the the glue wets it and then it looks uh, more gray and then we can just cut that off and cut the other free end off And then what we can see here, let's see if we can get it to focus. We've got a wrap of thread out toward the outer end of that tang, and that just locks it in, and we don't have it getting into the corner here with the prop shaft where it's going to tangle up uh, with the uh, uh, prop hanger. So now our spar is pretty much done zoom out again and now we need to set up to, to uh, put our blades on at two inches we're going to set our blade to 40 degrees so we've got locked in already at 40 degrees and we're going to put the prop shaft into the prop shaft holder and it's held in with this spring piece of wire um, we can let me go ahead down the closer to zero degrees we can turn the prop shaft around completely and make sure that the uh, spar is passing over the protractor at about the same height on each side if it's not you can carefully bend it it means you're not quite square at your um, uh, prop shaft Set it back to 40 degrees. Now we're ready to attach the blades. Okay, we got our blades out of the microwave. We take the rubber band off, and here's our blades nicely curved. And one came off with a piece of tissue. The other one might could have used a piece of tissue between it and the cover, but it's coming off there we go now we know we want a five inch diameter we know that the from the prop shaft here to the outer edge of the protractor is two inches which give us a four inch diameter so we want to come in a half an inch on each of these And go ahead and mark it half an inch from the tip. 
and again it's most important that they're both identical and mark them at the spar line you may also want to transfer the spar line to uh, the back side of the blade as well uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and we'll come back okay so I've got the spar line on both sides of the blade and I've got the little tick mark there at a half inch in from the tip now comes the juggling act we want to get the spar to the center of the protractor and then we're going to put the blade on with the concave side down and against the spar now in this case we really have the spar going out to the tip of the blade so that gives us a second reference there um, but I'm going to lay the spar right along the spar line and make so the um, tick mark is right at the outer edge of the protractor in here and I'm supporting everything and then I want to rotate the blade until it just touches the protractor at both ends of the blade um, you want to get that close that's going to set your pitch angle you can make adjustments later but you want to get that close then I'm going to come in here with a dot of CA and just put it right in the groove here along the blade again CA is very heavy so you want to minimize what you're using on here this is thin CA I don't use thick CA for anything it's liquid lead I know other people do but when you're when you're working on something that's going to only be a half a gram uh, you can easily put a half a gram of glue on it if you're using thick CA. Okay, so we get that blade on. Now we can pull the blade, the, the prop off, and then put it back on because the the blade, the spar won't make it past the protractor if you don't do that. And we'll repeat for the other side. Make sure the fat end of the blade is going in toward the hub and the thinner end is out at the tip so again I'll stand up see if I can get an angle on here laying the spar along the spar line and getting that tick mark right at the outer edge of the protractor this takes a little practice you don't want to press with a lot of force here and take the camber out of the blade because then you'll have the wrong angle on it. I like to put a dot at the inner end, dot at the outer end, double check everything, and then you can run a couple of dots along the length of the spar to lock it down. And if you try and do this straight out of the bottle, you're going to get way too much glue on it. You definitely want one of these um, capillary applicators. Real easy to make. Okay. We take our prop off and take a look at it. Make sure we've got a good glue bond everywhere. Everything looks pretty good and our spar is just a little bit long we're actually a, a little we probably could have used the tip of the spar to set the length uh, we set it a little bit inside of that so this prop is a little bit undersized that's fine we'll just clean up that spar you felt that it was still too much this is this spar is a little bit thick on this end um, you could clean that up a little bit but overall it's okay all right so we have one final step and that's to check our pitch you know, we we built it on the pitch gauge 
but uh, we're freehanding a lot of stuff there and we want to double check we've got it set to 40 degrees and we're looking at how the blade comes in against the protractor there it's pretty close um, this might be a millimeter high or so but it's uh, it's pretty close so now take the prop out flip it 180 degrees and check the other end and on this end we're quite high so we've got too much pitch on this blade we need to twist it down a little bit now you could just grab it and twist the wood um, that's going to um, uh, either damage the wood in here or it's going to take the twist out eventually. So what I like to do is wet this area a little bit and then hit it with a heat gun while I'm applying a twist to it. Okay, so I've wet the spar right in this area a little bit so that when I twist it and then dry it, it's going to hold to shape. Now I'm going to come in here. You don't want to twist the blade, so grab the spar pretty close to the middle and you're going to over twist it because it will spring back a little. And then careful not to melt your pitch gauge. And you can see now the blade is about like the other one was, almost touching on, on both ends of it. So uh, we've got the blade trued up in pitch. Now you can also use that same trick with the heat gun uh, to uh, adjust the blade pitch out in the field. Remember the, the helical shape of this was formed on a prop block that's set for uh, 10 inches of uh, pitch. And if you look at the two inch column of numbers on here, uh, we get 10 inches at about uh, 39 degrees of pitch. So we set it to 40 degrees in round numbers. We're pretty close to 10. You don't want to deviate from that, but at 35 degrees, it's 8.8. .8. At 45, it um, looks like 12.6. So you could vary it plus or minus five degrees and not be too far off on the shape. But if you want a, a much lower pitch, make a prop block for a lower pitch and then set it nominally to the pitch that your prop block was at. So now the only thing left on this uh, prop is to put some uh, Teflon bearings onto the shaft in order to reduce the friction between the shaft and the um, prop hanger. These are a super pain and this is where you might want to wear some um, magnifying glasses or something. If you can get a piece of Teflon picked up, then you're going to just feed it on. I got lucky that time. Feed it onto the shaft. And you want two pieces of the Teflon bearing material uh, on the shaft. Uh, that's going to minimize your friction. So you have Teflon sliding on Teflon. And you can see I, I really did get lucky on the first one. Um, my eyes are not as good as the kids' eyes. They can put these things right on. Okay, I got the second one on there. Let's see if we can focus it on there. And then I'm just going to push them around on the reverse S hook until they go down and against the spar. It looks like I knocked one of them off while pushing them around. And look at that. Got the 
them both on there. So we got two Teflon beads up against the prop. That way when the rubber is pulling back, it's going to have a nice smooth surface there to spin on. So then you, then you have your prop. Uh, you can make variations of the prop. Again, uh, if you're going to vary the pitch a lot, you're going to want to adjust the helical shape of the prop as well. If you're using a prop block, that means uh, forming a different uh, prop block. Uh, if you're using a uh, uh, bucket prop uh, on a cylinder or on a, a, a conical shape, uh, you're going to want to rerun the spreadsheet to find out what angle on what size cup or cylinder uh, will give you the closest to a helical uh, shape. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if there's uh, uh, things you like changed about the video. It's easy enough to edit. Let me know that in the comments. And if there's something else you'd like to see in a construction article, uh, put that in the comments uh, as well. Um, if you enjoy these videos and you're getting something out of them, I would encourage you to join the National Free Flight Society. Uh, not only will you get a very fine magazine, but we're putting together a lot of tools to support uh, youth in the hobby. And they also have some uh, scholarships available. Uh, for members. So I encourage you to look at that uh, for membership. Uh, look at every chance you can to compete, especially uh, for our youth. Uh, if you can uh, go to uh, an AMA contest, you're going to find that uh, experienced uh, pilots are more than willing to help you out uh, in trimming your plane and flying your plane and uh, encourage you uh, on the way. So uh, look at uh, the Free Flight Society. That's uh, freeflight.org. Uh, and uh, look at their uh, calendar of contests, see if there's a contest coming up in your area. Uh, we'll also be putting together a, um, a mentor's portal, a portal to uh, match students up with uh, NIFIS members as mentors in their uh, regional area uh, so that that can help you with some hands-on assistance. Hope you enjoyed it and thank you for listening.